Jeremiah chapter 39. We are now three quarters into the way of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah 39, this is it. It's done. It's finished. 38 chapters, God told them, repent, get right, stop it. And then when they called in the, the Egyptian army to come and help them instead of calling on God, that was it. Nebuchadnezzar has come three times, this is the third time. Christians in America and the world need to realize there will come a day when God's had enough of it. From the individual, from the nation, and from the people. And then the axe will fall. Babylon will have enough of it in the book of Daniel with Belshazzar having a feast with all the instruments that belong to the Lord. England was given up because they gave up the King James Bible. And they promised Israel land and then they the Balfour Declaration and for Jordan. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, the last king of Judah, the tenth month, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army against Jerusalem, and they besieged it. The eleventh year of Zedekiah, the fourth month, and the ninth day of the month. Did you get that? That's a month, a day, and a year. The city's broken up. Jerusalem's destroyed. And we don't even get the month, day, and year that Jesus Christ was born. You can put down on any of your game shows, when was Jerusalem broken up and destroyed by Babylon? And there's an answer. And then you can say, when was Jesus Christ born? Or oh, December 25th. <clears throat> That's tradition, not, not the Bible. So you can't say, well, you know, God doesn't have anything with dates and time. There's one date and time. The month, the day, and the year. And all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate. Even Nigar Shishter, Samgar Nebo, Sarshim, Rav Saris, Nagil Caesar, Ragmag, Ragmag. That, that's an interesting name. I'll call my little darling Rab Mag. With all the residue of the princes of the king of Babylon. So here's all the forces. And the wall had been broken down. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah the king of Judah saw them, and all the men of war, Babylonians, Chaldeans, then they fled. That's not what God told him in 38 and 37. Is there any word of the Lord, Jeremiah? And Jeremiah told him. And there he didn't listen. So he's going to get hammered. God told Jeremiah to tell them when the Babylonian army comes, surrender. And it will be well for thee. Now the rebellion against the word of God, we're going to read further. And they fled and went forth out of the city by night. Now Ezekiel is prophesying this before it happened. Ezekiel is told to go blindfolded, carry his sack on his back, and dig through the wall in the middle of the night. You can't see anything. This is Zedekiah and the men, the princes that are left. In the middle of the night, they're fleeing. By the way, the king's guard are trying to get away. 
by the gate betwixt two walls. And he went out the way of the plain. But the Chaldean army pursued after him. God told them where they were. You're not going to escape. And you're not going to make void the word of God. And overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. So he's going southeast. When they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Babylon, to Riblah, the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. Then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah and Riblah before his eyes. Zedekiah is standing there, and the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, slays the sons of Zedekiah. And also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. And these men would have been known by Zedekiah. But mostly his sons. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes. So the last, one of the last things that Zedekiah sees is his sons being murdered. And God told Zedekiah, we read it. Told Israel, Judah, many times, surrender. The surrender. And the false prophets and the false priests got all upset with Jeremiah. Where are they? Where are they? And bound him with chains to carry him to Babylon. And the Chaldees burnt the king's house and the houses of the people with fire. And this will be described in Ezekiel and in Nehemiah. And break down the walls of Jerusalem. This is described in Nehemiah. And Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, Carried away captive into Babylon the remnant of the people that remained in the city. And those that fell away, there are some people that listened. That's what God told them to do. They walked up to the Babylonian army and said, I surrender. And God would say to the Babylon, All right, you treat them well. That fell to him. Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, like God told him to do, with the rest of the people that remained. So there were people that did obey what Jeremiah said. Now, was it through all Jeremiah's ministry, or the fact is, oh, this is everything Jeremiah said was going to happen. I think we should now listen. Now, for them, it's okay, right. But in the present time, there will be a time that will be too late. When the trump is blown and the Christians are gone, my uncle was right. My daughter was right. My grandma was right. That church was right. That street preacher was right. I better get right now and do what they tell me to do. Too late. Because once the rapture happens, salvation is not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'm going to get in trouble by a preacher for what I'm going to say right now. Salvation in the tribulation period is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and keep the law and endure to the end, and don't take the mark. That's what Matthew said. He that endures to the end. That's not church age. You think about it. In the tribulation period, you come up six years and 364 days, and you say, I'm taking the mark. I'm done. <laughs> you're lost. You're going to hell. 
even if you miss one day. Jesus said, they said, the writings. You better keep your eyes open and keep watch. Faithful is with, when, the, when, the, when the master comes and finds his, his servants faithful. Uh, right here, they get a chance. But even the king, Zedekiah, didn't get a chance. Or he just didn't listen all the way. You know, we don't read. Zedekiah's running in the middle of the night and he's caught by the army. Oh, darn. That Jeremiah was right the whole time. Those stupid prophets I had. Those stupid. They're wrong. Oh, no, what, 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 quick, quick, quick. quick. What is it? All right, Chaldean army, I surrender. This is what God wants me to do. I surrender. God, I'm sorry, I surrender. You don't see Zedekiah doing that. But in chapter 38, we studied last night, Jeremiah already told him, if you don't surrender, here we go. We learn from the Old Testament book that God says it, it will happen. It may take a little while. But Neb Neber Zedam, the captain of the guard, left the poor of the people, which had nothing. What are they going to do? They're not going to revolt. In the land of Judah and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. So what they do is they turn the fields and the vineyards to these poor people who can't do nothing. They don't have nothing. They're going to raise crops for the Babylonian army. And for themselves and anybody that does remain in the city. And the, the, the Babylonian and the Chaldean army can be fed by who's left over. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave a charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, saying, Now you got to ask yourself a question here. Now we know Jeremiah already went to um, the Euphrates early in Jeremiah. Either, we got to assume that Jeremiah's name, because Babylon comes three times. This is the third time. Jeremiah has been a name amongst the people in Babylon. Or this is a special revelation to the king Nebuchadnezzar that there's one man in that land you better pay attention to. Now, Ezekiel's already in the land. He's been in the land since the second, the second takeover. Ezekiel will prophesy when we get to Ezekiel. He will prophesy some of the things that we're reading now. And we've seen Jeremiah get upset. We've seen Jeremiah get angry. He's going to quit. He's had a hard time. People hate him. They, they rebuke him. They, they, they cuss him out. They, they mock him and all that. And when the Babylonian army comes, there's one name in the Babylonian army, the man of God. Take him and look well to him and do him no harm. God's protection of Jeremiah for doing right of the enemy of Judah. But do unto him even as he shall say unto thee. Whatever Jeremiah tells you, you do it. That's the captain of the guard. You don't give that guy. That, no one gives the captain of the guard orders. Except for the king, Nebuchadnezzar. Anybody under the king of... And, King of the guard, never see then. Anybody in his troop comes walking over, and tell, you ain't going to tell your captain what to do. 
This order comes from King Nebuchadnezzar. You protect him, you look well to him, and if he, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. I, would you ever think that Jeremiah would think that would happen? We're going to read a couple things in a moment. I've got to wet my whistle. Come on! Would you ever would think and I, I'm active in public ministries and all that I don't know what the Lord is going to do tomorrow, next week, next month, next year how about the day when I finally get home to glory and all the wonderful things going to happen then <clears throat> so neighbors then Dan I like how you get one chapter and that one name just keeps coming up over and over and over and over. It's like, Lord, I couldn't see it the first time. The captain of the guard. And it keeps referencing the captain of the guard. The captain of the guard and his name. This is no ordinary man. Sent and Nebish ne yes, man. Rabbisaurus, I don't think he was a dinosaur, and Nagro Scherzer, there's your river mag, and all the and all the king of Babylon's princes, even they sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of prison. Now come on, Jeremiah is, is God put Jeremiah in prison to protect him from the from the army. There you go. You thought it was bad for Jeremiah to be in jail? Jeremiah was, Jeremiah did not get killed because he was in the jail. What about all those people that put him in jail? Zedekiah is on his way to Babylon blinded and in chains. The priests have been killed. Now here's Jeremiah in jail. I don't know. <clears throat> we don't know how much he, you know, going on. I don't know if he has a window or anything. Imagine Jeremiah, he's in jail. I don't know what kind of uniforms up, but here's the captain of the guard and these other people. It says, All the king's Babylon princes. Here's this group of people of authority walking up to a prison door with Jeremiah inside. What do you think he's thinking now? He hasn't heard verse 12. Though verse 12 is now in order. And all these men together are heading to Jeremiah for the purpose of Jeremiah and the protection of Jeremiah by the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Jeremiah does not know. There's nowhere it says, and the Lord spanked unto Jeremiah saying, I got your back. Even they sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of the prison and committed him to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shiphan, that he should carry him home so he dwelt among the people. Well, you remember he, he was heading his way home in, in the land of Benjamin and he got ended up in jail? He is released by the Babylonian army, military officials, and government heads. Jeremiah, yeah, I'm Jeremiah. All right, we're here to protect you. We're here. Whatever you tell us to do, everything's great. Come on out and go home. Where's everybody Jeremiah's been preaching to? Where are all the people that smacked Jeremiah? Put him in jail. That mocked him. I feel a sneeze coming. Now the word of the Lord. Excuse me. Now the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah. I mean, he just mad to Jeremiah. Just. Uh oh. <laughs> 
Now the word of the Lord came while well, he was shut up in the court of the prison saying. Now we're going to a whole different story now. This doesn't have to do with what we just read. Remember, a lot of places in Jeremiah, it's out of order. Jeremiah is in jail and the Lord speaks to him. He says, go and speak to Embed Malek, the Ethiopian. That's the man that went to King Zedekiah and said, hey, he's in the mire. He's going to die. There's no bread. King says, get 30 men. And he went and got 30 men. He got the old rags. He got the old you know, clots and all that. And he threw that down there. He said, Jeremiah, put it under your armhole. Interesting people in the Bible, Ethiopians. I believe there's only one time they attacked Israel. And they got their butt whipped. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Now, Jeremiah doesn't know he's going to come out. He may be thinking, hey, Elimelech is going to come visit him. He's going to come walking by. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to an Ethiopian, a Gentile. Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for evil. So it hasn't happened, verse 39, yet. At this writing, a verse 15, 18, it's out of order. That's why you got to study to show that self approved under God. You cannot say verse 15, 18, oh, after the Babylon, wait a minute, how can it be rightly divided? Not for good. And they shall be accomplished in the day before thee. Talking to Abimelech. Abimelech, you're going to see Jerusalem destroyed. But I, God, will, there's a will of God, I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord. Thou shalt not be given into the hand of men, of whom thou art afraid. That would be the Babylonians. It almost looks like that when the Babylonian army does come, God allows Abimelech, all right, just go. The Babylonian army, don't touch him. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, no death. But thy life shall be for a prey unto thee. So, the life of Abimelech, that's the only thing he's going to get. Doesn't say anything about a family, he's a eunuch. He's not going to get gold, he's not going to get silver, he's not. The only thing coming out of this is him, his life. And what he does later on, that's. Because, all right, here's the reason. Thou has put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. So there is a convert of Jeremiah. There is somebody that fears God. 39 books later, you find there is somebody that fears God. And when the, when the armies come, he's allowed to go. When the armies come, Jeremiah is protected. And we'll learn later on that Baruch, he's protected too. And the poor people and the people, you know, who are not going to have any uprising. The people who are not going to cause any divisions and troubles and problems. They will stay and they'll, they'll have to serve Babylon, but they will be given their lives and given fields and, and vineyards and all that. I'm telling you, if this would, if, I'm not saying it's going to, but this would happen to America. The people that carry the guns and carry the rebel flags and, you know, I'm going to, you know, pick my, the dead, 
take out my dead hands, my gun, and whatever that kind of nonsense. And we're only going to have Republican, or we're only going to have Democrat, or our race of people, BLM and all Those people will be eliminated by the army that comes in if this happens to America. Because those people are a threat. And people, you know, they go to work, they do what they're supposed to, they got a good character, they can be productive for the army. All right, you can stay. If you got a trade, you know, you would be carried away to Babylon because your trade could be used against the Babylonian army. So, that's yeah.